Hey guys and welcome back to the Valheim modded series here on my channel. Today I was just about to head off to the Black Forest just to get some troll leather so we can make some troll armor. However, I noticed on my way there that we have this horse right here now tamed. So both these horses are tamed. I didn't actually realize but this one here is a level one horse. So that extra star gives it double the HP. We can see there 240 HP versus just 120 for this one. So that's pretty cool. What I'm going to do now is open this up so they can say hello to each other properly and I'm going to chuck these berries here on the floor so they can hopefully start to have baby horses. Let's see if if this works. Okay, I'm killing a grayling, but uh, looks like love is in the air, at least for horse number one over here. <laughs> Got the, the uh, pink hearts came up there. Oh, pink hearts are everywhere. Okay, let's see. Are we going to get a baby horse? I want to see what they look like. Maybe we have to give them a bit of music, you know, just a little bound chicka bound bound. Okay, no joy just yet. I'm going to go on to the Black Forest and continue getting all the troll hide stuff, and then uh, when I come back, I'll keep checking on these guys uh, periodically to see if we have any babies. So I'm just back from my first trip at the uh, Black Forest, and guys, the horses have been busy. <laughs> so as you see here, we have this horse offspring right here and wait why does that oh no okay i was like they, they look quite big that's the thing but they're actually there are two offspring one is a one star and one is not a one star oh hello yes okay so i knew the horse offspring would run away from you i didn't know they got aggroed though so we have to actually tame them back up again so i might need to pick up some blueberries while i'm in the black forest yeah pretty cool we're getting a decent amount going here the fact that there's two already is awesome what i might need to do though is extend this pen out so i think i'll do that off cam and uh, make a nice big pen so we can get a load of horses together of course the goal of all this is to basically farm them so we can get all of the leather that we need and then make up a horse saddle and ride them around which should be pretty fun so if all goes to plan that will happen later on in this episode but for now i'm going to get back to resource grinding and making that horse pen a little bigger so guys i found myself a load of different animals here and this must be from the farmyard animals We've got these here old spots i don't know what an old spot is but they look like this i mean basically they're pigs i think right they, they that's sort of what they look like and he just made a pig noise i think pig confirmed but then look at this down here as well we got cows oh okay the cow's not happy with me he's gonna attack me he's not as friendly as the old spot uh, okay well so there's a load of farmyard animals here. This is roughly near the area that we found the crocodile before as well. Okay, these cows are wild and frightened, but we can probably herd them up later on. I think something to look into maybe once we build a farm, but I thought I'd show them because they look pretty cool. It also gave me an opportunity to uh, show you guys that they're hostile. So yeah, be careful with them, but uh, pretty cool nonetheless. Guys, I saw a crocodile here and decided to shoot it and see what happens. And uh, it does a fair bit of damage when you shoot it with a fire arrow. And this is just a basic level one crude bow. But more importantly, once you attack a crocodile, it'll actually run away. So this could be really useful. It could save your life and I had to mention this in the video. So if you see a crocodile coming out, you, do give it a good old shot with your uh, bow and arrow and hopefully it will at least run away from you if you don't quite have the uh, you know, levels yet to fight it. So as you can see in my inventory, we have 25 of the troll hide and I got some bones here as well, which means we can make a full set of troll armor. So that of course is the helmet, the cape and the pants and tunic. So our current armor, if you see here, is currently at three. So if we go ahead and just equip all this, we can see how much we improve by. And there we go. We've gone from three up to 19. So quite a considerable jump and the lovely thing about this mod here is the fact that it's all over here for us. None of it takes up any inventory space, which I really like. Now, as nice as having all this armor is, we still have the gem cutters table here, and we also have quite a lot of gems that we can process to add on or socket on, if we want to use the terminology from this mod, to all of the armor that we've just made to make it slightly better in different ways. So what we need to do is process all of these gems right here, and from that what we'll get is a load of these things here, and these are the things that can be socketed on. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that off cam, all the uh, processing of these gems to see uh, how how many of the final gems we essentially have that we can then socket onto this armor to make it all better. Now, I did touch on this mod in episode one of this series, so if you'd like a little bit more information, you can go back and check that out. But for now, let me go ahead and see what we can get out of all this, and then we'll go through together what additions we're going to add on to our armor. Just a quick tip here, guys, something I just figured out for myself. Uh, I knew this was in the pack, but I just hadn't thought to use it until now, and that is the following. When you open any crafting area, so in this case, it's our gem cutters table, let's say right here we want to try and make a simple sapphire. Well, over here, you can see that we have eight sapphires fire gemstones. Oh, I just noticed as well. Look at that. My mouse changes to a little gemstone for this uh, table GUI. That's so cool. Anyway, that's not what I'm showing you. What I want to show you is the following. So we've got eight here that we can try. Now, rather than crafting one by one like this, what we can do is go ahead here and set this to eight. Very good. There we go. Now when we hit craft, it will take the same amount of time, but it'll craft all eight in a row. So it just saves you a few clicks. You can do that and go to your second monitor or I don't know, read a book or something, but I thought I'd mention it because it is a mod in the pack. You'll see here it says we can make one out of 14 and we can obviously add these on. But if you go 
ahead and hit shift and then click, it'll add 10 at a time. And then you can shift and minus to remove 10 at a time. And if you go and control click, it'll bring the total there up to 100. So at that stage, you can hit craft and chances are you're not going to have a hundred of these things or even any other thing that you may be crafting up. So adding a hundred basically is going to mean like that's just do everything. You know, it kind of works like that. So yeah, just a couple small things there to mention for you guys. So I just realized when you start out in this mod, you have a 50, 50 chance of socketing uh, an item. And if it fails, it says down here, then the item will be destroyed. Now, because I've been leveling up my skill within this mod, I've got a 51% chance so i'm slightly a favorite to you know get at least two of these uh you know socketed but there is also a good chance we're going to destroy them so i'm going to try it for each of these four items and hopefully if we get two of them i will be happy but then we might have to go and find ourselves some more troll hide and stuff after that so let's give it a go and see how we do starting here with a helmet let's go add a socket and see what happens boom okay helmet's good <laughs> that's a great start now we'll try the tunic oh no it was destroyed okay well that's one on one that's what we would expect uh now we've got the let's do the cape next i feel like this one's going to work and this one is the more difficult one to make I think, right? Okay, here we go, cape. Oh, it's been destroyed. Okay, well, please give me the pads. That's a 50-50. Surely I deserve that. Oh, come on. What is my luck? 25%. I guess I need to go kill some more trolls. So basically, I'm going to keep repeating this process, guys, until I have sockets on all four items, and then we'll see what cool things we can add on to them. And I bloomin' hope it's worth it, because this is going to take me some time. In the last episode, we talked a little bit about vein mine, and I said about how it works on copper ore, but it doesn't work on rock. However, apparently it does work on rock if you try on these bigger rocks. So let's see a second. Okay, yes, it did. Oh, that's actually awesome. So we're going to be able to get stones so much faster now. So I'd like to say a thank you to the people who mentioned this. There was actually three of you. Uh, so we've got here the Janutin. I think that's probably the way of saying that. Juan Silva and someone whose name I'm just going to call Unbelievable because it's a more PG way. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for letting me know, guys. I appreciate that. And now everybody else who's watching this video will know as well. So I decided I actually want to make myself up a fine wood bow before we head off to the Black Forest just to speed up the process of getting all this extra troll stuff that we're going to need. So I've got the materials on me here to go ahead and make a bronze axe. And this is going to be a really nice upgrade to have in the game because this stone axe just has been a little bit tedious. <laughs> and so the next thing I'm going to do is go and obviously get myself some fine wood. And as this will be the first fine wood I'm getting in the game, hopefully there's a ton of new recipes and things unlocked as well. And while we're here, you can see this horse enclosure is coming along quite nicely and we're getting a lot of horses, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, let's check out our first fine wood we're going to get in the game and Crush is watching. So Alt 4 and here we go. And there we go. Fine wood is in our inventory. So let's pick up the rest of the stuff. And oh my goodness, so much stuff being unlocked already. So obviously you get a ton of stuff unlocked just in the vanilla game by getting fine wood but obviously uh, with all the mods we've got we're unlocking just a ton of stuff of course the thing i'm most excited to make is my fine wood bow and here we go we can finally make one of those so definitely good to be upgrading our stuff as we go through here i feel like i definitely need more weapon and armor and stuff like that which is why i'm working on it in today's video i'll be honest i have died a few times off cam and it's been getting annoying <laughs> now what i want to see is if we can upgrade this thing so let me go ahead and grab all the materials that i think we're going to need here and see how many upgrades we can do okay so one upgrade there to a level two fine wood bow and another one easily enough done now for the next one we're missing the upgrade to the workbench but when we get some more bronze we'll be able to do that so we'll upgrade that later on certainly before we fight the elder but uh, just good to have an upgraded bow for now now i'm just realizing what i probably should have done was try to add a socket to this bow before i did all the upgrades so yeah it would make sense that before you upgrade an item you try and add the socket first so if you're wasting your materials you waste as few as possible well i do now have a full set of troll armor with a socket ready to attach on an item i will say though this took an absolutely extraordinary amount of time to do. I got so unlucky with trying to add the sockets on. So whereas it's supposed to be about a one in two, I reckon it's like a one in three, maybe one in four that I actually got. And I had to kill so many trolls. But yes, anyway, I digress. It's just worth mentioning that this could take you a long time, guys, because obviously you do lose the odd item. And in my case, it was a lot. But let's have a look at what we're going to do and uh, talk a little bit about the improvements. So I've already decided here what I want to add on to each piece of armor. Now, when you press the tab key, if you go ahead and click on the raven here and then scroll down to socket effects, you get all of this information here. So this for example will tell me that like a ruby gemstone if added to a shield will give me pain tolerance which gives you decreased all damage taken and it gives you like every little stat that you need for all of the gems and all the different pieces they can be put onto so let's take a look at what i've decided to sock it on we'll start with the helmet right here and what we've added on there is gourmet 10. now what that does is it reduces your food drain rate so i assume by that that when you eat your food and you gain your hp and stuff the effects of that food take longer to dissipate so that could be quite useful and something a bit different i wanted to try out a few different things rather than just adding on armor stats and things like that to each of them so that we can sort of test them out together next up we've got the cape and the cape right here the cloak there it says glider five what that actually does is it reduces your fall damage so you can sort of fall a bit slower or a bit softer we're going to try this out but that's the idea of it to reduce fall damage then for our chest armor which is a troll tunic of course we're going to add on this one right here which gives us vitality three now vitality three actually gives you additional hp so that's actually a really useful one to have and something that will definitely be 
yeah, good for us throughout the game. And then finally, we've got a very interesting one for the leather pants. It's the spinal we've got here, but you see the legs, it says Mountain Goat 10, which is a great name for that. But basically what it means is you should be able to climb steeper slopes. And when we get to the mountain biome later on, that's going to be really useful. But for now, I just wanted to kind of try it out and have some fun with it. So I'm going to go ahead and add these sockets on to each of these. And uh, then we're going to try some of this stuff out on cam and see how it looks and how it works. So I want to try out this glider effect first on the cape. Now, if I jump off this rock, if I sprint and jump off, I would normally take fall damage. So let's just see if I do this right here, what happens? Oh, look at this. You get little wings. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really awesome. So it reduces all your fall damage by giving you these little wings that flap. Let's try that again. Yep, there we go. And we just glide around. That's actually going to be so useful in the mountain biome. I, I'm really pleased with this one already. It's getting a bit addictive. What did you use this now? <laughs> it's going to be overused, but it's fun nonetheless. Now, for the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and eat up some butte berries right there so that I'll just vomit and reset all my food effects so we can try out the other things that we've got going on here. So let's see. We're on a health of 23 right now. We've got the food here. So we've got 30 there, plus 22 is, of course, 52. And then plus here, 35. So that's going to be 87. So let's go ahead and eat all of this. And our max HP should be 87. But we're going to see here, because we've got Vitality 3 on this, it's supposed to add HP, I believe. So we'll see if this actually works. So with the 87 HP that we're supposed to gain, plus the 23 that we were on already from our HP, we should have been on 110 HP, I believe. But as you can see, we're at 113 now maxed out. And I'm wondering if that's because if I hover over here, we have Vitality 3. So maybe as we increase the level of that, literally each level corresponds to 1 HP. So kind of useful little thing right there, especially as you level it up through the game. Now, the next thing I'd like to look to level up is my bow. And I made the mistake of really upgrading this bow twice before I look to add a socket onto it. But we're going to try it nonetheless. I deserve a little bit of luck. I've had so much bad luck with this game so far. So let's have a look at what we want to add onto it. Now, I think, I mean, there's a lot of different things we can add on, but I think the best one is this one right here, the Ruby Gemstone, which will give us endless arrows. So not literally endless arrows, but it will reduce the uh, ammo that we use each time. That could be really, really useful, actually. Uh, so I'm going to try and get that one on. Uh, let's see how we go. So let's do this one on cam, see if that gives us a bit of extra luck. Uh, firewood bow, add a socket. Oh, please work. Please. Yes. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so do that luck, guys. I really am. All right, so now we need to get ourselves a ruby out of here like this. Uh, we hover over here, press E, and we open up the socket, and we add on the socket. So let's test this out. I've got here the nine flint head arrows. So let's go ahead, equip our bow, and shoot them, and see if every single time we use one or not. So fire the first one. Well, that didn't work. I fired it nine times, and yeah, we, we lost all of our arrows. So let me try this a few more times. So I'm going to make up some wood arrows so that we're not using any good arrows on this, and uh, I'm sure it does work. It's probably just a very low chance. And again, some you can probably level up through the game. So I've got 20 uh, wood arrows now. Let me go ahead and fire these and see how well this works uh, or not. Okay, all 20 of those got used, so I'm now going to make up 20 more. And I have to say, this is a little bit disappointing. Like, I get that it couldn't be too high of a level, but if it was like a 1 in 20, that would be nice, like where it didn't use up the durability. But so far, every single one is. So yeah. Okay, so I've now fired 49 arrows and it hasn't worked on any single one, which is a little bit disappointing. So much so that I'm going to assume it's either broken or simply not worth having and just sock it on a different thing. I think. So this one here seems quite interesting from the Spinal Gemstone uh, Master Archer, which will increase your bow skill level. So let's try that one out. Okay, so these are all my different skills. Uh, instantly, these ones right here are from the Magic Overhaul mod, I believe. Uh, but we're, of course, focusing on these skills here. And as you see, my bows right now, I'm level 21. So let's go ahead and uh, equip a Spinal Gem and see if that changes. Okay, so we're going to remove the Ruby. We're going to add on the Spinal. There we go. And now when I look at my skills. Okay, so there you go. So we're on 21, but we've got plus four here. So that's because let me just go ahead and hover over this. Yeah, there we go. So we've got Master Archer 4, so it's added on 4. Again, as we level this up, then it'll get a little bit better. So this is stuff that isn't like necessarily amazing early game. There are some advantages to it. I mean, particularly that glider thing I showed you with the cape, for example. But it is going to be something that we're going to need to keep leveling up through the game before we really get any like valid use out of it. Now, the next thing to look at is our melee weapons. And I have it on good authority from the mod author himself that the axe is definitely a weapon. As he said, the Valheim devs have confirmed this. But in terms of the socketing on of gems, it is considered a weapon and not a tool. Now, as a personal preference thing, I would love to see the ability to socket on tool abilities onto the axe because wood cutting is a big part of Valheim. However, we must play the mod as it is currently intended and set up. So let's have a look at our options and see what we're going to socket on. And I think to do this, I'm going to go ahead and start making up some bronze. And I'd like to make myself up a bronze mace because I like to get into a mace early game as my weapon of choice. OK, so let's go ahead and make up the mace. And we're just going to make one mace for now. And of course, we're not going to upgrade it because uh, I've made that mistake before. And let's see if we get lucky. So we want to socket onto the mace. Let's go add socket. Keep our fingers crossed. Boom. 
boom, okay, five we're getting some luck. You know what? This this 50-50 has started to even out, which is awesome. So there are a few different ones here that look pretty useful actually uh, for the weapons that you can add it to. So I think early game though, this one seems quite interesting, the fire starter, which does additional fire damage. It's going to be useful to us against some of the early game mobs like the Grey Dorse and things like that. So I think we'll try that one out and see how we get along with it. So once again, let's go ahead and add this ruby on. There we go. And now when I hover over here, we got fire starter five. So now with my mace equipped, let's go find something to test this on and see how it works. Okay, here we go. We got a Grey Dwarf over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit him and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It does. It sets him on fire. I was hoping it would do that. So there we go. Now that he's there, he's actually taking fire damage after we've hit him. So that is going to be really useful early game. Oh, it didn't work that time. Okay, maybe it's a chance thing. I'm going to try and get myself uh, into a Black Forest so we can find a load more Grey Dwarfs and try this out with a few different ones to see how this works. One nice thing about this glider ability is I can just run through the Black Forest and jump all over the place without any risk of damaging myself at all. So that means you're actually able to level up your jump really easily and also makes exploring a bit faster and a bit easier. So I definitely thought it'd be worth mentioning that. Okay, we've got a troll up here and this would be a great opportunity to test out whether this fire damage works or not because we'll be able to give him a good few hits. So let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, it's getting a little bit busy around here. I'm just doing a load of hitting, but we're not getting a very high percentage chance of this uh, fire effect. Okay, there we go. A hit there did do some fire damage to the troll. So it does seem to be working, albeit very slowly. So I would suggest that basically if we look over here, we've got this fire start of five. That's probably about a 5% chance, which is of course one in every 20 hits on average, we should get the fire damage done. Now that's definitely not a lot, but I actually think it's a good thing for the early game if it is a bit of a lower chance like that. The reason being is we can level this up and it is a bit of an OP mod in different ways as well. So I think it kind of levels out, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments. So just having a look at the uh, tools sockets now that we can add on for our bronze pickaxe and they're depicted by the little hammer here. So for spinal, you can see it decreases durability loss, which is one that we did in the previous episode that I talked about this. You have energetic over here, which will decrease stamina usage. But again, because we're running the berserker from magic overhaul, we have infinite stamina right now. But that right now is the only two that we have available to us. So it's going to definitely have to be the spinal one. So once again, I'll sock it on cam and let's see if we can get lucky once again with, let's see, our bronze pickaxe. Oh my goodness, we did that three in a row. All right, I'm no longer complaining about this. So let's grab a uh, simple spinal out of here and then we can go ahead and just socket that on and decrease the durability loss, which is definitely a very useful thing when you're gathering resources. So the final thing to do now, I think, is to make up the bronze buckler. I really enjoy having that one early game and then see what we can socket onto there. So it costs us 10 bronze to make the buckler, so this socket could be expensive. Again, let's give it a go and see what happens. I think there's a double cross for this 10 bronze. Oh my good. Okay. All right. You guys are lucky. I'm doing all this on cam from now on. <laughs> so let's have a look what our options are. With Onyx, we have tank right here. It says increases blocking skill, which is quite useful. Unfazed means it increases your stagger threshold. That one I actually really like. I might end up going with that one. Although pain tolerance right here that decreases all damage taken. That is pretty huge to be fair. We have avoidance here, which is a chance to not take damage. That's not bad either. And parry master increases your parry frame, which is good, but I think my favorite were the first two I looked at. So I think my favorite is the ruby one here. It decreases all damage taken. Essentially, that's what you're trying to do with a shield for the most part. So I'm going to go with that one. Let's go ahead and add that on. And boom, there we go. That's added on. And we've upgraded all our stuff from wooden to bronze, which is definitely a nice progression in the game. So the only thing I haven't socketed is the bronze axe. And that's because now that I have the mace and we're getting more into the game, I won't really be using this as a weapon much, but more as a tool. And as I said before, this in terms of the uh, mod that adds all the stuff on the dual craft mod, this is considered a weapon. So there's not really anything I'd want to socket onto this. That being said, I'm really happy with all the gear that we've got now, everything we've socketed on here. Uh, we've definitely really upgraded our stuff, which is going to just stand us in good stead for the rest of the game. So it definitely feels good to have some better equipment now. And the dual craft mod will be one that we'll continue to revisit throughout the series and cover in more detail as it is going to be an ongoing mod, but certainly a good start today. And uh, the dad jokes are of course coming, but first just enough time to go and name some of these horses. So thank you to everyone who submitted a name for the horses in the previous episode. Looks like we can have quite a few of these uh, and I'll be killing and breeding and stuff. So I'll have more and more over time. So if you ever want to suggest names, feel free to do so and I'll try to find them. Now, I think I managed to find just about like at least one name that everybody suggested in the previous video. Uh, but if I missed you out, I do apologize and I'll try to get to you in the future. So we're going to have Sigurd. This was suggested by Paula. Thank you, Paula. We're going to have Peritas. I think I say that right. Peritas, Peritas. Uh, that was suggested by Alison. Thank you, Alison. Then we have the classic Horsa. <laughs> Thank you for that one, Mateus. Then Parker over here. That was suggested by Adam. Thanks, Adam. Next, we have Sahara. I quite like this name, actually. That one was from Calum. Then we have Blitzen. That was suggested by Quentin. Thank you for that one, uh, Quentin. And we have Shadowfax. Another cool name. Thank you for that one, Eduardo. So there we go. Still a few horses left that we can name, but uh, plenty going on here for now. I did mention at the start of this episode that uh, we'd perhaps get into saddles and that sort of thing today, but it doesn't quite look like that's going to happen. And the main reason for that is because I'd actually like to build a proper farming area, not just for horses horses, but for some of the other animals we looked at today, like if we get cows and pigs and things, that'd be awesome. And also get some of the crops done. Like I've got carrots and things I could be planting and some modded crops as 
well. So I think a whole farming episode would be warranted. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and here come the dad jokes. What animal needs to wear a wig? A bald eagle. Where did Michael Jackson buy his pants? Billy jeans. I told the doctor I think my diarrhea is hereditary. She said, why is that? I said, it's in my jeans. What cocktail should you drink with a friend? A Buddy Mary.